Hey garden friends, happy spring. Oh my gosh, I am so excited that it's finally warming up and we are finally well into our growing season, well on our way into the growing season. I'm super excited to get started doing some projects around the garden and hopefully starting to kind of establish this new garden that we have since we've moved. So I'm really excited. Um, today's video is one of those projects that I have been wanting to do and it is going to be building some raised garden beds. So um, this is something that I knew I wanted to do when we moved here because we didn't have any space to be able to do that at our last house. So I'm super excited to be able to do it this time. And I'm crazy lucky because I did score some free wood from my brother. So these babies are completely free. So anyway, we're building these garden beds and they're super simple and straightforward. I did start this project with my husband a couple of days ago, so you will see some clips of him cutting the wood for me. He's pretty much cut everything out and we did start assembling one of the beds, but at that time, like that day, our daughter was just not sleeping. We were having trouble with her and I had to keep going back and forth trying to get her to go to sleep for her nap. So because of that, we were having a lot of trouble getting her to go to sleep and it just ended up that the project was not able to be completed so I am back here by myself I pretty much only have to screw a couple of things in but I figured I would go ahead and share with you guys the way that we're building these and then hopefully we can obviously finish building them I'm planning on building four I feel like that's gonna be enough so we'll see how that goes um, but I'm gonna try to assemble one completely today and then also kind of just show you guys the process so I hope you guys enjoy this video um, this is gonna be a super simple and like easy way to do this so I hope that this is like valuable information to be shared with you guys if you are like me and you just need something that's really easy i'm not looking for something to last a super long time because we are renting so for me i'm just looking to get something that will hold for a couple of years until hopefully we can move into our own place Okay, so these are the boards that I'm going to be using to make the garden boxes, the garden beds, um, or the raised beds. These are the boards I'm going to be using. As you can see, we have three different types of cuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera around so you guys can see it a little bit better and just explain kind of what we did here. So the first size that we have here is just the straight board that we originally had. So we decided what we would do is we would make, these boards are six inch by um, eight foot. So what we decided is we were going to go ahead and make garden beds that were four feet across and eight foot long. That way we could just cut the boards in half, which are these, so that those could be the ends of the board. And then these could be obviously the walls, like the long pieces of the rectangle. And so that's kind of the size that we're aiming for. The one thing we did notice is that you do have to measure and just make sure that these boards are actually eight foot long. So we noticed as we were cutting that some of them were just a little bit longer than eight foot. And so just to make sure that your beds actually end up square like they're supposed to, and you don't have any problems with things being off center or anything like that, um, definitely measure them. And if they are over eight foot, just trim them up so they're actually exactly eight foot. And do the same thing with your when you cut the boards in half. So just making sure that those are actually exactly four foot. And that way just everything works out the way it should once you start screwing things together. The third pieces that we have are these little boards. Um, so we took one board as well and we did, we cut them essentially into about 11 inches, um, almost 12. And we measured that just from how deep the, like the two boards stacked on top of each other were because we're doing them two boards high. Um, I hope that makes sense. So um, pretty much we put these inside the actual box so that they will hold the two levels together. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I mean. So this is essentially what I mean here. So we're making our boxes two levels high and then we're just gonna use these little 11 inch boards to screw everything together. Um, and then essentially putting them on each corner and then we're also going to put them in the middle as well. We're gonna have two on each long side. So that's essentially what we're gonna do. This is the partially completed box that my husband and I put together the other day. So these are the screws that we're using to put everything together. I have some one and five eighth inch um, exterior screws. Those are the long ones if I'm remembering correctly. I might be remembering that wrong. No, these are the shorter ones. So these are the ones that we're gonna use just for these little pieces right here. 
the short ones because obviously that's only like a little like a shorter distance <laughs> you can tell i'm super technical right <laughs> um so those are going to be the ones we're going to use for the inside and then for the edges right here we use longer screws obviously because it went longer into each corner and it'll just keep everything together a little bit better these we used a two and a half inch regular deck screw so i'm gonna go ahead and flip this around so you guys can see these are the brands we got we got these from home depot you can get them i mean of course they're just regular screws so it's not really anything particular but then we also used little pilot drill hole things <laughs> we also use these to kind of do a little pilot hole just so the screws would go in a little bit easier and apparently this is a special type of um drill bit so i will go ahead and list that below so that you guys can see what it is i'm not 100 percent sure my husband knows he picked these up for me and essentially it's just so that when you do screw them in as you can see they're kind of like indented so they don't end up sticking out and you could like cut your hand on them or whatever not necessary but it's definitely handy if you have them apparently they're fairly cheap to pick up from home depot or lowe's or what have you Hey all you flower guys and gals, this is Connor does. We're going to be doing some cutting today. <laughs> We're going to show you how to cut wood. So you just got to have two years of experience and new tools and then you just cut. That's all you do. Okay guys, I thought I would give you a little bit more of an in-depth explanation to what we are doing. Um, as much as he's cute when he's doing it. I think that he can go ahead and stick to his day job and I'll stick to the YouTubing. Um, but essentially what we're doing here in this clip is we are just cutting the long boards in half and we're actually cutting them to 47 and a half inches. So as I had mentioned in earlier, um, earlier in the video when I was filming is that not all of these boards are exactly six foot. So sometimes they're a little over, sometimes they're a little under. So just to make sure that we got all of the end boards completely even and we were able to make the most of the wood that we had we did cut them just a little bit shorter than exactly four foot so i would definitely suggest doing that and just finding an even number to kind of set yourself on and then once again now that he's cut one to 47 and a half he's just going to mark and make sure that the other board is also 47 and a half so that they're both exactly the same size. So I hope that that makes sense. And we did the same thing with the six foot boards, like the long boards, I'm sorry, not six foot, the eight foot boards, the longer sides, we did the same thing with those as well. And just a quick note about the setup that we're using here to accomplish this project. We did have two saw horses that we're using to support the board there um, so that we can cut with our circular saw. And obviously we had a circular saw on hand um, as well to be able to do this. So I would definitely keep that in mind if you are kind of looking to make raised beds to save yourself some money. You do need just some basic tools. Um, I do think that it would still end up being a little bit cheaper than buying them offline. Um, but you also have to take into account the time and it did take a good amount of time because we are not professional craftsmen so I would just keep this in mind you know as you're watching these YouTube videos that it definitely there's more that goes into it than maybe some people make it seem or um, yeah so just keep that into account when you're kind of deciding whether to take on a project or not and a also other quick note about this second cut that we're making now we're starting to use some of the boards that were really just super off in their measurements and we are using them for the 11 inch inside boards and we did decide to make those 11 inches just because practically even though the board said that they were six inches by eight foot it seemed that they actually tended to be a little bit closer to the like 11 inch tall for whatever reason it didn't actually equal out to 12 inches as you would think a six inch board <laughs> two six inch boards piled on top of each other would so just keep that in mind, even though obviously sometimes measurements can be one way on paper, definitely measure them yourself when you're actually there and that will make your life a whole heck of a lot easier rather than just going off of what logically you think they should be. 
Okay, so here in this next clip, you can see me kind of fumbling to start to try to get these boards drilled together. This is the next step that you're going to need to do um, when you're assembling these beds. So the next thing is just to go ahead and drill all of the pilot holes and then screw the screws in to start to assemble the frame um, or like the bottom frame for it. And then of course you'll do that twice to get the two rectangles that you need to stack on top of each other. Now, I will say that I got better at this as I went on. Um, this, I had previously done it, my husband had previously done it, so it was something that I kind of had to a little bit DIY or trial and error to kind of figure out what I was doing. Um, so you'll see later on that what I actually do is start to stick a board underneath the two boards that I'm drilling just to help them to actually stay like even and flat. And if you have like a patio or something, I would definitely recommend doing it on the patio because that would have made my life a whole heck of a lot easier and how I will be assembling these going forward. I don't know why I didn't think of it at the time, but it definitely would help just to keep everything flat and make sure that obviously you don't have crooked boards or anything like that or one board that's off a little bit because it's not even with the bottom of the other board so I hope that all makes sense what I'm trying to kind of communicate but essentially if you're trying to make it easier for yourself do this on a hard surface and not in the grass and that will make your life a whole lot easier so essentially what I'm doing is I am just drilling two pilot holes I then once I've drilled the first one, actually screw that in to go ahead and keep the two boards together. And then I'll go ahead and do the pilot hole on the bottom. So don't do both the pilot holes at the same time. Do one pilot hole and then screw it in. And that'll make it a lot easier to screw in your second one or to actually drill your second pilot hole and then screw it in. Um, so pretty much this is what I did on every single side. And I did one at the top and one at the bottom. So pretty much I just repeated this on all four sides and it's gonna start speeding up now because obviously I'm trying to get you guys through this so you don't have to watch this two hour project in real time. Um, but you can see this is the part where I actually take the little extra scrap wood and put it underneath just to make the bottoms a little more even and that helped a ton and it helped a lot more too just giving me a firm base to press on. Um, Obviously, I don't know if I necessarily need to say this, but please be careful if you're using power tools and especially drills. You can't really see where my fingers are here or how I'm holding the boards, um, but I definitely was trying to be conscientious of not of my fingers not being where I'm drilling um, and yeah, just making sure that I'm not going to drill into my hand. So please be careful, especially if you are untrained as I am, uh, do what I say, not what I do kind of thing. <laughs> Now that we've finished assembling the rectangles, we're going to go ahead and switch out the long drill bit for the short one and then start using the shorter screws as well to secure the 11 inch really short boards that go on the inside of the beds to the outer, the two outer rectangles um, to hopefully hold the whole thing together. So you'll see that here I'm holding the two boards together while I'm drilling and I would definitely recommend at the end of the video you're going to see at the very end I start using a clamp to hold the board and I would definitely re recommend doing that from the beginning um, grabbing yourself a pair of clamps and using that just so you don't have to fiddle with it the way that I did and I pretty much the entire time held it by hand and my hand was so sore the next day um, from just holding it together while I drilled into it. Um, so yeah, definitely take that tip to heart and <laughs> get some clamps because they're super cheap and totally worth it. Um, but I also wanted to kind of talk a little bit just about the pricing with this project um, since I haven't quite mentioned it yet. So. Um, Obviously, I mentioned to you that I had gotten these boards completely for free from my brother, but if you did buy this lumber for yourself, this bed would run you about $70 to $80 in wood. Um, and then, of course, if you needed to buy all of the materials, that would probably run you another $100 dollars or so um, depending on how expensive of a drill you got and how expensive of saw horses circular saw and clamps that you got but you could buy just the cheapest on the market and only get yourself another hundred dollars in the red for this project and if you bought a 
raised bed that was already assembled from like gardener supply, the very cheapest ones that you're gonna find are like 300. So you'd still save yourself about $100, um, but obviously that's still $200 more than an in-ground bed. So just something to take into consideration um, if you're debating making some raised beds on your own. Okay, garden friends, here it is. It's finished, finally. Oh, I'm so glad to have at least one done. This was definitely a, not a complicated project, but just a time consuming one. Um, so I would definitely say that it's not something that you can do necessarily in like an hour, but it is well worth it. I mean, look at how much space I'm gonna have to plant. I'm so excited. Okay, so just a layman's like review, I guess. Um, so pretty much the only things that you need for this project is something to cut the wood with because we did have to trim the wood down and obviously cut the boards in half. So you need some kind of saw or a sawzall or something like that. Um, you will need a drill and also a screwdriver. I'm trying to think. Um, and that's pretty much all you're gonna need. Although I will say that we also use saw horses to cut. You'll see that in a couple of clips at the, earlier in the video. We use some saw horses from our father-in-law um, to be able to cut the wood as well. So that's probably also necessary for this project. So I would just keep that in mind if you are like a beginner or if you're just getting into this stuff and you're not completely sure whether this is like it's a good fit to do raised beds or in-ground beds. I would definitely say that in-ground beds are a little bit less work but raised beds do allow you to make sure that you know exactly what's going into your like um, soil and to make sure the soil is like adequate for growing crops that way you don't necessarily have to deal with like soil testing and all of that so um, I think it just depends on you and like your needs but I hope that this was a like educational or inspirational or I don't know, that you could just come along with me and see kind of our process for building these raised beds. We've got one down, now just three more to go. <laughs> but we'll get them done eventually. It does take a little while. It took us two afternoons to get this completed, um, and that was just for one. But obviously we're only working in like hour, two hour increments. So I would say that the invest time investment on this is at least four hours. Um, I mean, it might be a little bit less just depending if you're really handy and you don't run into as many issues as we did then it might go a little bit faster for you um, but we had some like warped boards and you know I had to change out a couple of drill bits and just stuff like that so um, yeah so otherwise I hope you guys enjoyed this video and definitely tune in for when I actually end up planting these guys up um, which will be hopefully hopefully in a couple of weeks, um, but we'll see how everything goes. Either way, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!